Well, more than a million Australians are out of work. It's a terrifying figure, the worst in 22 years. And a warning this morning, it'll remain high for another five years. For more, we're joined by Home Affairs Minister Peter Dutton and Deputy Leader of the Opposition, Richard Miles. Gentlemen, good morning to both of you. Peter, morning, before we get to that, we just had the New South Wales Premier on the show and you'd think with a shared border, she and Anastasia Palaszczuk would talk regularly, but not so. That relationship has totally broken down and we now have frontline workers distressed with talk Queensland is about to harden the border, something New South Wales hasn't been told about. Is National Cabinet a joke? No, it's not. But when you get to a Premier like Anastasia Palaszczuk making announcements about border closures uh, when Gladys Berejiklian is doing a press conference and she's caught out you know, the questions asked of her and she knows nothing about it, she hadn't been contacted by Queensland, well, you'd imagine that she'd be a bit miffed and I just think it's childish and there's a there, there is a growing mood here in Queensland at the moment I've got to say Ali of people who you know say look if the doctors are saying close the borders or put in place this regime fair enough but there's a lot of politics being played in Queensland at the moment by the state government here in relation to this issue you see brochures now going out uh, into letterboxes in marginal seats and whatnot and uh, Anastasia Palaszczuk is walking a fine line here people will be cynical if they think these decisions are being made for political reasons and uh, her breakdown in the relationship with the New South Wales Premier, uh, particularly for those people who live uh, in the Tweed or on the Gold Coast, is, is negatively impacting on those lives and businesses and it's unacceptable. Richard, I think there is political squabbling happening all over this country. I thought we we're all in this together. Well, we should all be in it together, but I, I think you asked the, the really pertinent question. Is National Cabinet a joke? Because when you're talking about a question as fundamental as uh, state borders. You would think that that's something that could be worked out cooperatively between the relevant state governments, but led by uh, the Commonwealth Government. And certainly uh, keeping the Queensland border closed is starting to look like a much better decision um, as, as history unfolds. Um, we saw Carl apologise to Anastasia Palaszczuk a few weeks ago. I'm wondering whether Peter's going to do the same thing. Uh, but if we've learned anything from what's going on in relation to Victoria right now, um, you remove measures of physical distancing, of which this is an example, very carefully and very cautiously. Uh, I can't imagine that Peter's going to apologise any time soon. I want to talk about oh, unemployment. It's with him. It is with him. <laughs> I, well, I want to talk I'm, about I'm unemployment. I'm happy to apologise if I've got something to apologise for, but I, I've said all along, stick to the medical advice. And if you stick to the medical advice, it says open or close, adhere to that. But the game playing that's going on here in Queensland at the moment by Premier Palaszczuk is, is I think, farcical. Peter, um, Qantas and Virgin knew the Ruby Princess was a coronavirus to time bomb but were powerless to stop it. What do you say to that? Well, there's a report that, uh, uh, that's uh, been conducted by the New South Wales Government and uh, the report obviously will be trawled over by different people but uh, I, I think there, there will be lessons that will be learned. I think New South Wales Health and no doubt other health authorities around the country will reassess uh, how they do their threat analysis or look at the ways in which they can mitigate some of this risk with people coming off ships or off planes, etc. And I think the borders will be a new environment uh, when we come out of this because we will look closely at people for whether they're a criminal or a terrorist threat, but more importantly, or as importantly, into the future, whether or not people are a health risk as well. So I think there's a lot of work to go on between now and when the borders do reopen. Tell you what, there's but, a lot of questions. Ali yeah. Uh, but the Ruby Princess is fundamentally uh, not a decision about or not an issue about New South Wales health. This is the Commonwealth Government. This is Australia's border. I mean, what's really clear from the Ruby Princess is that this is fundamentally a failing in relation to the Australia border force. Mm. Um, and Peter, as the oh, relevant Richard, minister, finally, needs to take responsibility for that. I mean, keeping on pointing reading to, from, to New South Wales health as though it's their problem. You're Ruby finally Princess reading from Christina's talking notes, mate, mate, honestly. Talk. Hang on, be, what's that, What's that, Peter? D don't be bullied by Christina, Richard, that's all I'll say. I mean, other people stand up to Christina's bullying. You should as well. Don't, don't fall for having to come on and talk her talking points. Her, her nonsense about Ruby Princess and the abuse toward the Australian Border Force officers, I think, has been uh, a very poor reflection on her. And uh, the, the reality is that, uh, that New South Wales Health and others... Uh, have gone through a process. Uh, there was lessons learnt in relation to Ruby Princess. Uh, and if there are changes that need to be made in the future, well, New South Wales Government, Commonwealth, whoever it is, will make those decisions. No, no, it's the Commonwealth. Not whoever it is, it's the Commonwealth. Are you saying the Ruby Princess has nothing to do with the Commonwealth Government? 
Richard, I don't employ a doctor or nurse at the airport, at ports. That is the responsibility of the Victorian Health Department, of the Queensland Health Department, the New South Wales Health Department. It is nothing to do with the Australian Border Force. They look at documentation. They want to make it's sure the people have got valid passports. They want to make sure that people have got valid visas, that they're not criminals coming into our country. But they do not conduct testing. They don't conduct temperature tests, etc. That is not the responsibility. Even this very day, people coming in from overseas at Sydney Airport will not be tested by an Australian Border Force official. It will be by New South Wales Health. That's the reality of it. Well, can I say, Ali, I reckon this is the critical issue when it comes to coronavirus and, and Australia's response to it. I mean, ultimately, it's to state the obvious that this virus has come to Australia from overseas. If the Commonwealth, in what Peter has just said, is not going to accept responsibility for managing our border in respect of keeping coronavirus out, or at least managing it in terms of when it has interacted with our border, then that says everything about where we're at right now in terms of this virus taking hold in Australia. You know what I think, gentlemen? I think this is the exact thing that the people of Australia don't want to see. We've got two premiers fighting over a border. We've got you fighting over Ruby Princess. We're fighting over who's to blame for hotel quarantine, who's to blame for aged care. I think everyone would like to see it all put aside, move forward, and let's focus on the virus. Ali, the reality is that our country... The reality is, uh, to be fair, the reality is that our country is dealing with this probably in a more successful way than almost any other country in the world. Now, there have been mistakes in Victoria. That's the reason for the outbreak at the moment. They've been well documented. The Victorian government and the Premier there have accepted that the hotel fiasco has led to the disaster in Victoria at the moment. That's not the case in New South Wales. It's not the case in Queensland or WA. And the reality is, at a federal government level, we closed the borders. Uh, I was in the United States and called the Prime Minister. We dealt with the issue of cruise ships. We had some 28 cruise ships in our waters at the time and our decision, early decision, to close uh, the borders with China and ultimately close our borders altogether and to deal with the cruise ships uh, I think was one of the major contributing factors and the fact uh, from a Commonwealth level is that uh, through JobKeeper, through JobSeeker and other support payments we have provided more support to Australian families who are in the toughest year of their life. So. Uh, I, I, if you stick to those facts, there is no argument. But the mm. sniping by Anthony Albanese and Christina Keneally and uh, on, Richard Miles, who's above you. that, I think it's is, all is, of you. Is ridiculous. And just very, very quickly, I mean, Richard, right of reply, but keep it very quick because we've run out of time. Well, well evident, evidently, Ali, we didn't close the borders in time. I mean, that's become completely clear. But what you hear from members of the Commonwealth Government, what we've heard from Peter right now, is an absolute refusal to accept responsibility for anything. It's either the Victorian government's fault, it's New South Wales Health's fault, it's everybody's fault but their own. Uh, but the fact of the matter is this virus is here. It's throughout aged care, which is fundamentally a Commonwealth responsibility. And what we don't see is the Prime Minister standing up day in, day out, accepting that responsibility, like, for example, what we're seeing with the Victorian Premier. OK, I you know what? what? I just Australians want to say, guys, because it is Friday and I don't want to end with us all fighting, so <laughs> I just want to show you the beautiful cake that Richard Miles made with his daughter while in isolation. I mean, rich, well, beautiful's a stretch. Um, <laughs> however, you We're try... We're becoming creative. And, and I think it's important that we, we leave on that note rather than, than the bickering. Gentlemen, have a nice weekend and enjoy and Parliament when it resumes on August 24. Thanks, Thank Ellie.